Okay, the time being 9 a.m. on Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. I'd like to call this meeting of the Public Health Committee to order. I'm Chairman Jarrett Sanchez. Clerk, if you could please call the roll. Silva? Here. Lewis? Lewis here. Chepro? Chepro here. Strathman? Strathman here. Tepe? Tepe here. Weber? Weber here. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, could I please have a, a motion to approve the minutes for December 16th, 2020? Happy move. move. Oh, and um, most of us are online, I should say. Um, if you want to speak during any discussion, use the chat function in the Zoom. I go back to ignoring people. Uh, hey, Canel, can you mute yourself, please? Thanks. Um, so during discussions, if you could use the chat function in the Zoom. I have it pulled up in front of me so I can see. Blair doesn't have to let me know if you guys want to talk. For motions and seconds, it's just going to be kind of chaos. That's fine. But uh, for the discussions, if you could try and use the Zoom chat, if you're calling in with a phone and you want to ask a question, you don't have the Zoom chat in front of you, that's fine if you um, just speak up and say your name and ask to be recognized. But otherwise, try and use the chat today and um, keep it nice and tight. Um, so I don't really know who motion and second because it was like three voices at once. Did you catch that? Happy moves. Teppy moves. Weber will second. Weber seconds. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, any discussion, changes, corrections to the minutes? Okay, seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Lewis? Shepro? Yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Teppy? Teppy, yes. Weber? Weber, yes. Silva? Yes. Okay, it passes. Um, next, we have finance and budget. Do we have, uh, Canel, I saw you're on. Do you have a, a quick report for us, or is it the, the report is as it stands? If any questions need to be asked? Okay, I'm not seeing anything from Canel. Uh, does anyone have any questions on this month's? Public health finance reports. The enum, we will move on. Public comments on agenda items. Obviously, we don't have anyone here present in the public. Do we have anyone online that you're aware of, Blair? I didn't see any sign ups for today. Seeing. Okay, that's hopefully a good sign. <laughs> Let's move on to animal control. Uh, good morning, everyone. How are you today? Good. How are you, Brett? Very good, just making sure you could hear me. Um, just a couple quick updates of where we stand at the moment. Our lobby is still closed to the public with the COVID restrictions. Um, we're working with everybody through our parking lots. We have signs posted outside so people don't have to get out of their car and call in. Um, so we're still making sure that everybody is getting the services that they need from our facilities. Um, just we're coming to them instead of them having to come inside to us. A um, little bit colder on the staff, but we're sucking it up. Uh, we do still have two positions open at this time. That's the part-time kennel position that we're hoping to fill soon. Uh, we just made a temporary offer to somebody, and we still have a warden position. So for the last uh, four months, we've been operating on two wardens uh, for our 550 square miles within this county. Um, not many applicants at the moment, but we're continuing to always push through different avenues to try to get some more people inside of here. Um, the one exciting thing I do have for this month is our floors are starting Monday. Um, that resolution just passed at the last county board meeting. We're very excited. So 12521, which is this coming Monday, the project will take two weeks to complete. We're going to do half the building at one time. Um, that way it gives us a chance to shift around our animals and then uh, shift the animals and do the other half. We're very excited. These floors are 14 years old. Um, when we clean them, they're very slick. Uh, people are slipping all the time. It, it really has become a hazard that we're very excited to get these fixed and um, upgraded to where they should be. Uh, we work very hard to clean, to keep a very clean facility, excuse me, and we want to maintain that cleanliness at all time and ensure that when the public does see our facility, how clean and, and proud of what the county does for them. So getting new floors is going to help us ensure that it is clean and safe for everybody here at this facility. Um, at this time, our revenue does exceed expenses. We're very excited about this month, um, especially given everything going on with COVID. Um, we're hoping that restrictions continue to lift and we can get back to some uh, some sort of normalcy with getting pets vaccinated this summer. If anybody has questions, I am always here. Please let me know. All right. Thank you, Brett. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Youngstead? Seeing none, 
Seeing none, we will move on. So thank you for being here, Brett. Thank you. Okay, uh, Interim Executive Director Flash Report. I'll turn it over to Kathy Foster. Good morning, everyone. So sunny today, but very cold. Um, so the um, for our Public Health Committee Flash Report, um, you'll see the uh, COVID-19 vaccination clinics for our priority group 1A. So this was the kickoff that happened early January and we had it at the Kane County Fairgrounds. Um, it's kind of hard to take pictures because we didn't want to take it when it was all filled up. But um, we had an awesome, uh, great first couple of days. And uh, the first day, we were more um, conservative, but the second day we were, be able, we were able to up our game once we knew everyone, we had it and we're rolling through. So, um, so this just showing that we are very excited to continue on to fill gaps. Uh, we're, we're gonna have very, we're gonna have a lot of providers. Uh, we already have, um, to that note, we have, 42 providers, I believe, signed up, and we believe we'll have more. And when I say that, I mean providers' uh, sites signed up. So we can talk about that more in the COVID-19 presentation. It's going to happen soon. Um, and then kind of on a uh, sadder note, um, those of you might be remembering Tom Schleter. He passed away. Um, January, uh, December 30th, um, evidently he was fighting cancer. We did not know this. So um, we found out later, Tom was pretty private. Um, he worked with us as the public information officer and spokesperson for Kane County Health Department. As uh, many of you probably might remember, um, Tom did, you know, worked on a lot of projects with us. Um, he went through hepatitis B scare with us, H1N1, TB break, uh, the first public health national reaccredit or accreditation um, through Ebola, Zika, norovirus, lead poisoning, measles, and much more. Um, he loved, uh, you know, talking to the media and news outlets, and uh, you know, just informing people. Um, we're really going to miss Tom and uh, he was a great guy. So um, uh, on the next note we have, it's National Radon Action Month. So um, this is about testing your home and protecting your health. Um, for those of you, if you've ever had a radon test, I know I've had one. It's so easy. You just take this uh, kit and you put it in, you know, it'll give you the instructions. You put it in your basement and you can have it, you know, a test done and you send it into the state and you get your results. And it's, it's, uh, it's a very easy thing to do. So, um, so we're, our efforts are to make people aware of that. So, um, and that's what I have for the flash report. Is there any questions? I know you'll have questions about the COVID-19 and the vaccination, and we're going to be um, folding that into our updates today. This is Dr. Silva, quick question. The radon kits uh, can be purchased at the health department and would they be ordered online as well or no? Um, I can check for you. Uche, are you on? Uche on Wuta? I do not see her. Oh, okay. Um, so I know that you could purchase purchase them at the health department, um, but I do not know if you can purchase them online through the health department. But um, let me check for you, Dr. Silva. That's a good question. Yeah, Thank you. Mr. Kopi, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
speaking with uh, the township and one of the uh, village administrators on uh, past few days in regards to um, in regards to access to the uh, coronavirus vaccine, um, there is still seems to be a little bit of a disconnect. And this falls in line with the concern that uh, Mr. Tepe and Sir Sergis voiced at the last meeting um, in that uh, I feel that they're not getting the information, even though the information is available. So I was wondering if there was a possibility, uh, for an example, my district is uh, five municipalities and two townships and some fire departments. Is there a possibility that's 10 addresses that you'd have to mail or, or email to, um, you know, just a, a, a broad flyer to say, hey, look over here. This is where the information is. And then there was some discussion about, uh, about the, uh, administ- the, 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 the facilities administering. You touched base on it, and I was just wondering, curious also, uh, this is a question if uh, there was uh, one intended to be up by Dell Webb. And the third question I have is, um, is there, is there a, uh, a pecking order in regards to who would uh, be the first, uh, first in line, uh, the, most, uh, the, the more vulnerable? I've got a retirement community in my district, and I'd like to um, address that also. Okay, Mr. Kopi, we're going to get to the COVID update in just a moment. So um, allow uh, Executive Director Foster to go through that. And if you still have those questions, then ask them after that, and then we can address it at that time. Okay, well, those are the questions. And if you touch base with them, great. Excellent. I'll try Thanks. not to uh, interfere with the meeting too much. Thank you. Anyone else have any uh, questions or comments on the flash report? Seeing none, uh, let us move on to the COVID-19 update, what everyone is waiting for. Ms. Fosser. All right. And with me today, I have Assistant Director Community of Community Health, Michael Isaacson, who is also our incident commander for COVID-19. So um, I don't see, is the presentation coming up still? Yeah, I'm working on it just a moment. <laughs> okay, thank you. Awesome. All right, Michael, take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, Good morning, everyone. Um, What we want to do right now is share an overview of the plan that we have to administer COVID vaccine to our residents uh, and hopefully answer questions that you have and certainly take suggestions. Um, So if I could go to the next slide, please, Blair. So one thing we like to emphasize is that our vaccination plan is actually built on plans that we've had in place uh, for 20 years. We do have what we call a medical countermeasure dispensing annex. Uh, So this is something that we've worked with the Kane County Office of Emergency Management and our other community partners on. We've done drills. We've tested this over the years. So uh, this is not something that we're needing to create on the fly. It's actually something that we've practiced over the years. Uh, And then the upper left-hand corner, you can see that we're also following the state plan. Uh, The state plan is is something that's being updated more regularly. Uh, It is specific to COVID. So this is where we're getting our guidance in terms of uh, who the different priority groups are. Uh, Next slide, please, Blair. One thing that we do like to emphasize is that this is going to be a long process. So it's gonna take several months to get vaccine out into the community. Uh, as we start to talk about priority groups, uh, we certainly understand that everyone is concerned and, and would like to be vaccinated as soon as possible. Uh, but logistically and with the amount of vaccine that's available, uh, it's not possible to do everyone at once. So it is gonna s- spread out over the next several months. Uh, we did put a little marker there on, on December 16th. That's, that is when the first vaccine arrived in Kane County. Uh, we're about the five week mark. So this little chart here is, is from the national, uh, a national committee, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. They're the group who makes the recommendations about who should get vaccine. Uh, something that we also think is important about this chart is just showing 
it's not it's not going to be where phase 1a stops and phase 1b starts but rather we're going to begin a phase and then the previous phase will also continue so there's going to be overlap uh, we're seeing with the healthcare personnel and the long-term care facilities that are currently in 1a uh, that there's some people who have not opted to take the vaccine yet we're still encouraging them to be vaccinated, but that's something that's gonna take some time. Next slide, please. So here are just a few pictures of the first vaccine delivery that we did receive on December uh, 16th. Uh, so you can see we had the, the chair and the sheriff. The sheriff has been invaluable in providing security and assistance with transportation, uh, as has the Office of Emergency Management. Next slide, please. You may hear about uh, the different vaccines and how they need to be stored at different temperatures. Mm -hmm. The Pfizer vaccine is the one that needs the ultra cold storage. So we've just for, for your interest, uh, we've included what the packaging looks like. So you can see one of our employees uh, working with the vaccine and the, the package of dry ice there. Uh, there are some logistical issues that we need to be very careful because these vaccines are sensitive. Uh, so we do have data loggers where we're tracking the temperature on an ongoing basis. Next slide, please. So the first group and the group that we're currently still working on is what we're calling uh, priority group 1A. So basically this is healthcare workers, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> healthcare workers and long-term care facilities. Uh, the health department has been partnering with our five Kane County based hospitals as well as our federally qualified healthcare centers to provide vaccine to our healthcare workers. Uh, I think I mentioned last month that there is a contract with both CVS and Walgreens so that they can provide, actually go on site and provide uh, vaccine at the long-term care facilities. Uh, we do have these documents in PDFs uh, so we can send them to you so they're a little easier to read if you'd like to see them. Uh, but this, I think just the, the purpose of this slide is just really to show you there's a lot of different positions in these agencies uh, who are currently being vaccinated as part of 1A. Uh, we do have a clinic, uh, two clinics actually scheduled this week where we're getting close to wrapping up 1A uh, so that we'll be ready to move into 1B um, here in the next week or so. Next slide, please. Uh, this shows the vaccine that's come into Kane County, and it shows where we've delivered it. So you can see starting with December 16th, we received that initial dose, uh, or the, the initial doses. All of those were pushed out to our hospitals because that was where we really wanted to make sure we had those frontline healthcare workers covered. Uh, then you can see subsequent deliveries after that, uh, both Pfizer and Moderna. Uh, with the Pfizer vaccine, that's um, the second dose is provided 21 days after the first dose. And with Moderna, it's 28 days later. Um, so there is some scheduling that we need to keep in mind. Uh, and then we're scheduled to receive uh, additional doses today. Uh, but one thing to point out here is you can see it's been rather inconsistent uh, on a weekly basis, how much vaccine we're getting. So when we start talking about where our clinics are and when they're, they're being planned, uh, a major limiting factor is how much vaccine is actually coming in and when we know it's coming. Because the something that we want to avoid is scheduling a clinic and then having to cancel it because we don't have the supply of vaccine on hand. Uh, so you can see here, we've distributed 17,000 plus doses to our community partners. Uh, at our clinics, we have administered uh, just under 2,200 doses. And then we anticipate uh, administering another 2,000 doses this week uh, through health department clinics. Uh, again, this is for the 1A healthcare providers. Next slide, please. Now we get into phase 1B, which uh, around the state should be beginning uh, as early as next week, uh, definitely in the next two weeks. This is a very large category. Uh, this is some additional detail that the Illinois Department of Public Health has uh, just recently made available to us. Uh, but you can see in this group, uh, and I'll read through it just so, so you can see who, who's involved, uh, everyone over the age of 65. So in Kane County, we have over 75,000 residents that are over the age of 65. Uh, so again, it's going to take us some time to get out to all of those residents, 
Some are being covered as part of that long-term care facility uh, partnership with CVS and Walgreens, but most, most people over 65 don't live in a long-term care facility, so they're going to need to get the vaccine other ways. Uh, we want to finish up our first responders. Uh, and again, the, the 65 and over is because that's who's more likely to have serious illness and potentially death from COVID. Uh, some of these other groups have been put in this priority because of the nature of their work. We're asking them to be on the front lines, providing essential services, so they are more likely to come into contact with somebody that has COVID. So that includes first responders. It includes our education sector, which is both childcare and pre-K through 12th grade. Uh, so of course, our school districts are some of our larger employers in the county. So that is a lot of people, well over 10,000 people uh, work in our schools the food and agriculture sector. Um, so if, um, if you're playing kind of vaccine bingo, Mr. Kenyon, you can mark off each box you qualify for here and uh, uh, <laughs> jump to the front of the line if you want. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Food, <laughs> sure. Uh, food and agriculture is obviously critically important and the nature of this work doesn't allow people to um, stay home and work on their laptop in their living room. They have to be out in, uh, in the community working with others. Same for the manufacturing sector uh, and inmates. Uh, because of the congregate nature of jails, uh, including our, our youth detention centers, uh, those are areas where we have seen outbreaks. So, so we wanna make sure to protect those people. Uh, the postal service, public transit, uh, certainly our grocery store workers that we all are depending on and asking to be there on the front lines for us. And then the shelters, um, because again, that's a congregate setting where if somebody does have COVID, it's much more likely for it to pass on to other people. Next slide, please. So what, what do you expect to see in the, the coming weeks? And this is really the meat of what is the plan in Kane County? Well, we, we have set up the communications uh, mechanism where we're providing residents updates. We've had over 38,000 Kane County residents who have um, signed up for that so far. So that's been very successful. We're in the process now of transitioning that educational um, communication system into an actual registration system where we will be able to collect a little additional information with some surveys. And then if people fit into these priority groups uh, based on when they sign up with us, it will actually serve as a way that we, they can, people can be in line and we can notify them of where different clinics are gonna be. Uh, there's also a statewide registration system that's gonna go live in the next week or so. Uh, this is called the EM track, uh, which is emergency management track. So this is actually a scheduling tool. And when clinics are set up, the resident is gonna have an opportunity to go in and actually pick a time slot so somebody would know I'm going at 10, 15 a.m. to this location to get my shot. They don't have to get there three hours early and stand in the line and out in the cold. They can just show up uh, at their allotted time. So we think that's gonna move much, much more smoothly. Uh, we're also having specific discussions uh, with other populations. So this includes potentially setting up uh, what we call pods, uh, or points of distribution uh, with sectors. So as we look at law enforcement, it's easier for us just to bring law enforcement into one place. Certainly when we work with the jail, we're going to go to the jail. Uh, as, as was mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Coffey mentioned um, Sun City. We're looking at different populations like that where it makes sense for us to actually go on site and provide the vaccine. Uh, now when I say we, it could be the health department or it could be one of our community partners. Uh, as Interim Director Foster mentioned, we do have 42 organizations that are currently registered to administer vaccine in Kane County, and we're working on a daily basis to grow that list. So over in the right-hand side, what are we gonna see for vaccine capacity? Right now, we're not getting enough vaccine. Uh, that's the truth, nobody is. It, I don't view it as a shortage, they're, they're making it, they're pushing it out, um, but we don't have enough for what we need yet. But that's gonna continue to increase. We expect week by week that our deliveries are gonna get larger and larger for Kane County. Uh, so that's something that we hope to see continually improving. The predictability of the vaccine uh, deliveries should continue to improve. So now 
we get 4,000 one week, 7,000 the next week, that makes it hard for us to plan clinics. But as production ramps up and as delivery gets a little more clear, uh, I think it's going to help us with our planning so that we'll be able to plan clinics a little bit further in the future and feel comfortable that we're going to actually have the vaccine on hand and that we will have uh, second doses available for, available for people as well. Uh, the number of providers will increase. So if, we, um, if we're able to get all of our pharmacies, our private doctor's offices, our federally qualified healthcare centers, which include VNA Healthcare, Greater Elgin Family Care Center, and Aunt Martha's. Uh, if we get all of these places able to provide vaccine, we're going to make it much easier for our residents. Uh, so as Kathy mentioned, we have 42 who are already signed up and have been through the state's approval process. Uh, we only anticipate that number growing. So we, we view vaccine as being uh, easier and easier for people to sign up and get. Uh, and then finally, we will see sometime, we don't know exactly when, but we'll start to see direct shipments. Uh, so this is where now all vaccine comes straight to Kane County and we distribute it to our partners. That's great from a control perspective, especially now in tier 1A where we wanna make sure the right people are getting it, but it's also logistically something that requires a tremendous amount of our resources uh, to manage all those deliveries and pickups. Once a hospital is able to, or a doctor's office is able to just directly order it themselves, that's gonna streamline the process and we're gonna be able to get vaccine to our residents much, much quicker. Next slide, please, Blair. I uh, just want to transition and just say a couple quick notes about what we're seeing in the community. Uh, and the, these slides are regional data. And the reason that that's important is that the regional data is what the state of Illinois is using to determine what level of mitigation or what the rules and restrictions are for us. Uh, so there's three measures, test positivity, bed availability, and hospitalizations. You can see on the left for test positivity, uh, we wanted to be below 12, we were, so that was great. And now they've taken the 12% the line off and our new goal is to get back down below 8%. Uh, so we have been doing pretty well and you can see over the last uh, week or so, our test positivity, which is the number of tests uh, out of the tests that we do, what percentage come back positive. So uh, right now we're right around 9%. Uh, which is an improvement, so that's great. On the right, you can see bed availability. Uh, this is one that they've actually changed the way they're reporting it. Uh, so now it used to be ICU beds and med surge beds split up. Now they've combined them. On this chart, we want that line to go up, uh, which means we have more beds available. And you can see over the last several days, we are seeing an increase in our bed availability, which is a good thing. This measure is actually what, what kept us last week from moving from tier three mitigation to tier two mitigation. But then over the weekend, they changed the way they were measuring it. And it did allow us to go from tier three mitigation to tier two mitigation, uh, which um, allows us to have more people instead of trying to keep it to just household guests. Uh, now businesses in Kane County can have special events with up to 10 people, uh, which is starting to move in the right direction. It doesn't completely open business up yet. It doesn't open indoor dining yet, uh, but we are starting, based on the improvements in our numbers, we are starting to be able to open things up a bit. Next slide, please, Blair. And for hospitalizations over the last month, it's been very positive. Uh, you can see we've had four days in a row with slight increases. Uh, but again, this is for all the hospitals in Kane and DuPage County, and each increase is just a couple of cases. Uh, so overall, our trend here is still looking very positive. Uh, one note I do want to make, though, even though we have a lot of great data here where things are looking better and we're very excited to see the vaccine out, uh, we are still seeing a high number of deaths each week. So we're seeing over 20 deaths each week. Uh, even as high as 30, 35 deaths each week. So we're seeing improvements in many areas, but, but still seeing some, some negative consequences as well. And next slide, please. Finally, we just like to remind people that even with the vaccine, it's still important for people to wear face coverings and keep their social distance. Uh, some people it's not as clear. Uh, so we like to, to emphasize when you get the vaccine that should protect you 
from serious illness. But even if you've been vaccinated, it's still possible for you to get the virus and pass it to someone else. So until we get enough people in the community vaccinated where we can really drive cases down, uh, we still all need to be careful. And that's the end of the presentation. So we can open it up for questions. Okay, I've got a couple that have come in online. So if anyone online wants to speak, just put it in the chat and I'll recognize you guys in order. Um, first, we had uh, Ms. Bates. Ms. Bates, did you still have a question? And everyone is muted, so you're going to have to unmute yourself to speak, just FYI. Um, hi, thank you, Chairman. Um, I have a couple questions. First of all, <clears throat> in the hospitals, will the temporary or contract workers be able to get the vaccine while they're watching their coworkers get the vaccine? Absolutely. So, so the way that the tiers are set up, it's not based on payment. So whether somebody's an employee, a contractor, or a volunteer, it's more based on their risk level, based on the type of work they're doing. So, so yes, they should be. Okay, thank you for that good answer. Uh, I have one more question. So when I look on the IDPH um, website, it says we are at 12.3%. Is that old data? Are you giving us better, new, newer data? Uh, I think you said we are at um, 9%. Right. So there's there's two places that you can get data. Well, there's a lot of places to get data on the IDPH website, but on the Kane County specific charts that they use, those are always a little over a week old. Uh, the regional, if you look at the regional data, uh, that is only a couple of days old. And on the regional data, if you scroll down beneath the, the charts that I just showed, uh, it actually has tables that show test positivity per day and on a seven day rolling average. And it shows it for both the region as well as for Kane County independently and DuPage County independently. So for both of those, we're, we're looking much better. Is, what website is that? Uh, if, yeah, I can, I'll put the link in the um, Thank chat. You. Okay, is, is DuPage doing better than we are? Are we, uh, I don't want people to think that Kane is doing better than we really are because it, it'll, lead to risky behavior. Sure. No, DuPage, DuPage County's positivity rate is better than ours. But so that's the case. That, yeah, but oh, we feel ahead. that it's safe in Kane County to go to tier two? To tier two, yes, because actually the change from tier three to tier two uh, does not change very much. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's pretty limited in terms of, you know, going from household members to a group of 10 it allows some more indoor recreational activities to occur, uh, but actually it's a pretty small change. The real change will be when we go from tier two back to phase four, which I know is clear language for everybody, uh, but, but when we get rid of the tiers, uh, then we'll be much better because that will allow indoor dining, that will allow more indoor recreation and, and larger special events. Uh, including things like like funerals, which have been really tough for our residents with with these restrictions. Okay, I don't want people to think we're safer than we are. Thank you. We, yeah, definitely. And even like I said, just if we can emphasize, anytime you're talking to to any of the residents in your district, uh, even with the vaccine, we still need to be careful for a while. Thank you, uh, Dr. Silva. You had your hand up next. Yes, good morning. Thank you, uh, Chairperson Sanchez. Uh, a quick question regarding the online registration. Um, you state in one of the slides that online registration will go live. So it is not live yet. When will it go live? Sure, so there's, there's two components that I should clarify. So we are registering residents uh, who come, with, come in with us. We're putting them on a list so that they can be notified specifically when there's clinics that will match their group. So that's a registration for residents to get on our list. That's not a reservation for a specific time to attend a clinic. Uh, so the second part of it is when can I register to go get my shot on Tuesday, uh, for example, that is specific to vaccine supply. So those registration links will be made available to people as the clinics are, are made available. So right now, because we're still in tier 1A, we're not registering people for any of the open clinics. We're focused on, on registering healthcare providers 
in what we call a closed pod. So it's, it's invite only right now to get people in. Uh, but otherwise, within the next week, we will be uh, making reservations available online for that specific um, through the M-Track system. So for those um, individuals who do qualify in the 1A category, um, you know about them and you will reach out to them. There's, they don't, the 1A um, uh, folks don't have to actually register. The, the one we are reaching out through a variety of different groups to identify 1A personnel. So if there are people who have not uh, been vaccinated yet in that group that would like to be, uh, if they could contact that, us, then we can give them the specific information for to register. So if you want to okay. give them my email address, that's fine. We have a whole process where we identify uh, in specific audiences uh, who, who may be interested in taking the vaccine in a specific office uh, so that we can plan appropriately. Okay. And um, the, uh, thank you for that information, Mr. Isaacson. Uh, and, and so then the next question that I have um, could be simple, it could be hard, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to simplify it. Basically, uh, what uh, the residents in my district, and I think all residents that we serve in King County, just want to know when, where, how. And you're explaining the how, okay, that was part of the first question. Um, the when is dependent on the amount of vaccine that comes, and that's coming from the state, so we really have no control over that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and the where uh, goes, by to, goes back to the 42 sites that have already been approved. Um, it's going to be opening up hopefully to doctor's offices, other FQHCs, more at the health department, and there will be a, a time when um, these individuals will be able to, uh, to request the vaccine directly without going through us. Correct? That's, that is correct, yes. Okay, so at this time in Kane County, doctor's offices are not able to, to offer the vaccines. Is that correct? That is correct, but partially because we're still in 1A. So as soon as, as next week, if, if the state announces that we could be going into 1B, if we have vaccine supply, we are able to provide vaccine to uh, any of the approved providers that are on the state's list. So we will be providing to those, those doctor's offices very shortly. Okay, understood. Thank you very much for that very clear and concise presentation. Sure, and, and ju that's just a comment in terms of the timing and the when and the where, which we absolutely understand that's the key question. Uh, I can just assure everyone we do have plans in place and part of it is, is dependent on some outside forces exactly uh, when it goes live. So for example, if the governor announces tomorrow that he is going to ship uh, vaccine directly to every OSCO in Illinois, we don't know if that would happen, but that could happen that's going to be great for our residents because that's going to make it easier for them to get it. But we can't plan for that yet. So what we're planning to do is push out vaccine through the providers that we do have agreements with. And then as these additional things come into place, again, hopefully we view those as complementary to what we already have in place. And it's not that we, we don't have those things planned out. It's just that some of them uh, are going to be federal or state decisions that we're not necessarily going to know about uh, until pretty soon before they occur. Thank you so much also for pointing out that these plans have been in place for 20 years. So mm -hmm. I've always said that you you never know how good of a job you guys are, you, you as uh, staff are doing um, until you stop doing it, right? So at this point, you've been doing a phenomenal job and basically it is going back to the those plans that have been in place. Um, so all this information is available to the residents and to each one of us um, county board members. We can feel free to, to call you and, and, and have these questions answered a little bit more specifically because you do, uh, to me, seem to have the answers. Thank you, Dr. Silva. And we're, we're certainly happy to also participate in any forums. So if, if you'd like conversations with residents in your district, we're happy, I know based on earlier conversations, uh, to meet with mayors and townships and uh, county board districts and just have a forum where we can discuss some of this. Because I think a lot of our residents understandably are concerned because they as individuals don't know exactly which day they're gonna get vaccine. 
uh, in all of our conversations when we're able to, to explain to people what the process is. Uh, people leave satisfied. They understand it may be a couple of weeks or several weeks before they get the vaccine, uh, but they understand that there's a process and that there is a plan. So we're, we're happy to engage in any of those conversations. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Silva. And I just wanted to kind of put it in a, in a different way um, for people listening at home to understand. We have we have the ability to get these vaccines out if we get the vaccines. If we get 40,000 vaccines in tomorrow, you're going to see huge plans being unfurled, you know, sites popping up all over the place because we're ready to go. That, that's the real message here. We're ready to go. Now it's just a matter of when we move into 1B, how much vaccine are we going to get on what kind of regular basis? So another, I just keep repeating to myself that we're still at the beginning of this process, even though we want it to happen now, we're so over COVID and all of the restrictions and everything. We want this thing to, to be immediate, but the reality is it's, it's, we're in the beginning of this. It's going to take a little time, but once it gets going, once everything gets in place and the, the supply is, is meeting the demand, we're going to forget that we had all of this, anxiety over waiting. But uh, as for, for right now, we're ready to go. So um, next was Mr. Tepe, you had a question or a comment? Yes, I had to go off mute. Thank you. Um, if I understood correctly, you said you had some 45,000 people that have signed up. Uh, yeah, thir 38,000 as of yesterday. 38,000. Is that creating a a priority list of people because it, it was not presented that way. No, so this will be a change based on what we've been hearing from elected officials and the public. Uh, we initially created this communication mechanism where we said, here is how we're gonna share information with you. And the feedback that we received from people was, how come I can't register with you? It's partially semantics, but we are making the transition where we're gonna be sending out surveys and probably later today, we will make that transition to where people can actually get the feeling that they are registering with us to get their name on a list. So this, you're absolutely right, sir. This is a change uh, that we're making based on the feedback that we've received from the community. Okay, so if I registered for that They have your phone in San Francisco with you, Vern. I, yes, San Francisco. It's long, very long distance. If I registered for that information list, am I therefore given a slot number, so to speak? So we do have everybody who has signed up for that information. We have a database of when everyone signed up. And you will be getting a survey where we'll ask you some additional information to clarify which priority group you may be in. Uh, but we know where you are in that in that line, uh, so to speak. And then again, as more partners are providing vaccine, we're going to be able to give you information about how you can register in these different places. But you may not choose to go to the first place we suggest for you. So I may say, okay, Mr. Tepe, you can go to CVS. Uh, they're taking registrations right now. Um, but that may not be convenient for you. You may wanna wait for one of the clinics that we're setting up closer to, to your community. Uh, and as more providers come on board, I think this is also an important point. There's gonna be more access in the community, which is very positive, but there's also gonna be less county control. So if a doctor's office is directly ordering vaccine from the state, we're not the ones providing it for them, we have much less oversight about how they're making appointments, et cetera. So even though I view it as a net positive that we're making vaccine more available to the public, there may be places that are providing vaccine where if your doctor gets it, you may be able to get it through your doctor quicker than waiting for us to get to you on our list, if that makes sense. So it's kind of two tracks that are going and then whichever works best for you as an individual you'll have that opportunity available for you. I, I, I understand, but let me go back to the original list. People were signing up for that list for information. So I, for example, signed up myself. I did not sign up my wife. Right. So now you're changing the rules and you don't have any information associated with this. 
and you're saying this is now a priority list. I, I, think, I think that that is um, a bit confusing to people and people are going to be upset by that. Yeah, no, understood. And we will work through that with everyone uh, because what you're saying is something that we definitely have considered. So when you're signing up to get an email communication, you're not including the list of everybody in your household. That makes perfect sense. Uh, so as we work through this and as we do these follow-up surveys, we are taking that into account. And as the, the list where we're asking more specific questions, we will give the opportunity for additional people to sign up. Okay. When, but again, I'll go ahead. When people are, when people are being finally signed up, are you going to use the Juvar system? We are, yes, that's the plan. Okay, is that going to be countywide or are the providers going to have their own systems? If a provider is getting vaccine independently, they will have the option to not use that system. Okay. So if I can say just a, a word about that for people who may not know, to be a provider that's approved by the state of Illinois, uh, it requires them to be registered with the state's online vaccine registry, uh, which is called iCares. And every vaccine that's administered, we are asked to enter all of that person's information into this system within 24 hours. So every provider that we give vaccine to needs to be able to enter into that system. Uh, the 42 people that, that um, Interim Director Foster mentioned they are all in the system and have been approved as COVID providers. They do not necessarily have to use this MTRAC or this EMTRAC system to do their scheduling. We are looking at doing it and a nice thing about it is because it automatically will download the data into the registry, saving us the time of doing all that manual data entry. Uh, uh, just an, uh, an example, a hospital with their own electronic health record that already enters data into the vaccine registry may not need to use that additional system because they already have it covered. So they would not use, they could choose not to use that system, uh, but the net outcome should be the same. You still would be making an appointment, you'd get your vaccine and the vaccine would be cataloged in the, in the statewide registry. But it would still be using a separate system but going into the same database. So it's just a different entry point. The main, the main thing is to get all the information into the iCares vaccine registry at the end of the day. Okay, to, to me, it, uh, I'm not sure where you're going to be at, but to me, it's gonna be confusing for people to say, okay, it would, would, let me rephrase that. It would be much easier to say to people, here is the one place you go to make a reservation. But, that may not be under your control. Okay, Correct. thank you Correct. for all my questions. Yes, no, very good questions, thank you. And even some counties may opt not to use that system. So uh, if we had one national place where people could sign up, that would definitely be simpler. Um, but yeah, unfortunately that, that's not the current landscape. Shame on them, it's an easy system. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks. Mr. Tebby, I think it's, it's, it's good to keep in mind there are two separate distribution arms for 1B and the one is the direct shipment to these providers and the other is the, the shipments directly to the county. So the county will be able to direct everyone to the EM track sign up system that the state uses and that will be orderly. The direct shipments to all the other partners that we have no control over, Mr. Isaacson said, you know, that's, that's going to be more of the chaos part if, if we can even call it that. Uh, simply because everyone's on their own at that point. So your doctor is, is working independently of the, of the county and working independently of the Walmart pharmacy and the CVS pharmacy. So I, I think when we are aware of these places that have avail like publicly available vaccines like Walmart and CVS, I think we'll be able to help promote that to our list, to you know, the Kane County Connects and wherever else. But um, for private per practice providers and things like that, it's going to have to be the relationship and conversations you have with your own doctor to find out if you can get it through that venue. But yeah, as far as what we have supply of, that will go through the EM track system, the state system. So that will make a little more sense, at least for us. Okay, uh, Miss Lewis, uh, did you still have a question? 
Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. First of all, Michael, thank you. Um, really good presentation. Um, so I, I actually have one and a half questions. First one, so I got an email yesterday from my provider um, asking people to go in and sign up for when availability does happen. Um, should I sign up um, for the state site and sign up through my local person or just go straight to my local? It's, it's my advocate, you know, my Aurora advocate, whatever the big group is. I think we all have options as far as that goes. So if, if you're able to get the vaccine through your provider more quickly, mm -hmm. I think that's beneficial for you to do. Uh, potentially your, your provider could put your name on a list and it could mm -hmm. be three months before you actually get it. So yeah. uh, even though it complicates things with our list, and I think this gets to Mr. Tepe's point, when the more lists you have, uh, you risk duplication, you risk people making appointments right. in different areas. Uh, but I think if you want to make sure that you're taken care of, it doesn't hurt to have your name on our list. Uh, because again, that's not, it's not yet a specific appointment time. It's right. just putting you on the list so that we'll notify you when appointments are available. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't want to, you know, be on multiple lists and, and complicate things. So, sure. okay. Very good answer. And then secondly, um, I have a very specific, I have a daughter who is, um, working one of the schools. So she'll be in the next group. Um, what literature do we have about the safety of it? Because she's like, I don't know if I should get it. And I'm like, you should. So do we have literature available on safety of the, of the vaccine? We do. Absolutely. So the, these are new vaccines, but, but mm -hmm. uh, we can make available the, the safety information that we provide when people mm -hmm. do make appointments with us. Okay. Uh, so we can share that if, if people like to read it ahead of time. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Will you send that to the committee? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Those, those uh, safety and efficacy studies can be a little technical, but um, to summarize, they're pretty safe so far. <laughs> yeah. But you know, um, some of us have, uh, you know, like I'm willing to do it, but some of us have, have family members that like to read all that detail. So, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I think we should have a presentation maybe next month on the different kinds of vaccines that are out there right now for, for COVID. Um, obviously the Pfizer one we know about, but there, there's a couple other ones that are, they're slightly different, um, but they're all kind of similar in what they're, what they're doing. Um, for us. Yeah, yeah. So, so like the Pfizer one doesn't have the live virus, for instance, but there are mm -hmm. others that do have a, a, a modified version of the virus, yeah. for instance. So it's very fascinating yeah. stuff, but maybe we could talk about that um, next month. Yeah, um, sounds good. Let's, uh, did you have anything else, Ms. Lewis? Nope, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Silva, you have another question? Thank you for that. Um, I'll make it brief. Online forums and some questions that I've received from the constituency is uh, are we able to, is anyone able to go to any other part of Illinois and potentially get it sooner? Um, I do see sometimes that people suggest, oh, I got mine at um, UIC and it was really easy possibility for someone who is um, looking to travel soon, who um, there are so, all sorts of situations. Um, people in hospice that I've heard about, um, can anybody access a vaccine, anybody in those situations, those emergent situations, access a vaccine sooner by going to a different, uh, to an area outside of Kane? That, that's a good question and, and it's a little bit sticky. So uh, certainly this is a national response. The vaccine is coming to us uh, as a national resource, a federal resource that's being provided to the states to administer at the local level. Uh, as such, you know, we like to say we're all in this together. Uh, we're really prioritizing people who live or work in Kane County. Uh, not that we're turning people away necessarily from an outside jurisdiction, but we are trying to screen and really focus on our people first. We don't want busloads of people from other communities coming in uh, for the simple fact that allocations are based on your population. Uh, that being said, we know we have residents who are being vaccinated in Will County and DuPage County and McHenry County, uh, just as we know that there are people who work in Kane County uh, from many other communities. So that's kind of the, the background answer to your question. Can people go different places? Uh, they can. I don't know that it's something that as a health department we would formally recommend to people. Um, but they, I believe they, they can, I don't know, depending on the locale they go to, 
uh, exactly what screening would be in place uh, if they could potentially be turned away or not. Thank you. I understand that that's probably not something that we want to promote. Um, that uh, I am just I do um, since the information is out there. I would like to provide some clarity and um, and and the resource if or or the the truth. Um, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Fonstock, if you could pull that up. So I'm gonna, Roger had offered to show this to everyone. This is what the, the um, state website looks like for vaccine registration. So you sign up for the Kane County's mailing list. We keep you informed on what's going on. And when the time comes, we have events that people can sign up for and actually make an appointment to get a vaccination. This is what we're going to be sending everyone to. So you can see it's very simple, it just lets you know the different criteria for the phases that we're in. Okay. Jared, this is Roger, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Roger. Okay, so this is the website that's published by IDPH. They uh, have this site available. It is relatively difficult to find on the IDPH website. They're not publishing it widely yet and uh, neither is uh, Kane County because we're still in 1A. Um, but you'll see that's what they're talking about up here at the top is the 1A uh, vaccination. And then as you scroll down, you'll see where they start um, talking about your local health department getting to, you know, from 1A to 1B. And then they describe who is categorically in 1B. I think it's important to note that if you look at this, they're specifically talking about the uh, points of distribution um, operated by your local health department. So this is what uh, Michael was talking about um, through the local health department. If they're offering vaccination for 1A or 1B, they would advertise their sites within this. So if you click on take the screening questionnaire, you'll see a questionnaire pop up and it's a bunch of yes, no questions to see which category you fit into. So if I say I'm over 65, and then I scroll down and I say, well, uh, am I a physician, nurse? No. Am I a long-term care? For, no, I'm not any of these things. So none of these things fit, but let's just say I'm over 65 and relatively everything else doesn't apply. And I say next, uh, they'll ask you to confirm the selections that you've made. And this is their survey to find out if you fit in 1A or 1B. And then once you say confirm, They'll tell you what's available in Illinois right now um, for your category. So these are the sites that are doing 1B right now. We have sites that are uh, being configured with the health department for the 1B category. They're gonna be working through that uh, this week. Next week, we'll be working on it probably. But once you pick one of these sites, which they'll allow you to pick this up until the point where you confirm it, and then when you tell them you're in the wrong zip code, they'll tell you probably that you're not eligible. So if I click register, um, it'll show me Adams County over 65 category. And these are all the slots. They're all red, which means you can't get one. So the, the next thing you would do, I was hoping I'd see one that was uh, green. I could show you the, the second it, you get to the uh, next category where it shows um, the green uh, category, and they, they don't have any in the next month either. But that's where you're running into some of the challenges is that, um, yeah, obviously, you know, the, the uh, 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 going from here and picking a site and seeing if you can find one that has got availability. So when you click on one that has availability, it'll take you into um, a full scheduler where they ask you your details. They'll actually start asking you for, you know, your name, your address, uh, phone number, contact information. It starts getting, you know, more, more in depth as you go through. Earlier, um, I was able to see a couple of sites that actually had the, the green um, availability. And when you see that, you'll see the, the, the calendar changes. These haven't been published yet, they're gray. So I don't see any, but yeah, I was hoping you could see one of the green ones to see the next stage in. 
So the next stage in, they ask you all of your personal information and then they ask you to confirm that. And this is a ticket-based system. So it's not a, a, a authentication system. You'll get a ticket, which is for your appointment. And then at the vaccination site, you have to present that ticket. And then they ask you some follow-up questions to verify uh, the things that you said on the online part of it. Once they confirm that, they match you up to uh, the ticket system and EM track, which would also flow back into the state system, which is also what Michael was talking about. So that would be the part of tracking the vaccination and going to the second uh, vaccination that you have to get in three or four weeks. So that's basically what's out there now. And available. Like I said, we've been working with the health department to get our um, information and sites in there. We do have a test site that is in there for us to work with and practice with. And we're pretty comfortable that once we get the um, sites and the uh, staffing and the, the, you know, obviously the information about availability of the vaccine that we'd be able to uh, get a site configured within probably two or three days, we'd have it up and running. So that's really all we have um, as far as the site information, but I thought that might be helpful for you to see kind of the developed part of it, what the state has done. So I'll take any questions if you have them. Does anyone have any questions for Roger about this? Um, something uh, people watching at home, Kane County residents might see this and, and say, oh, look at all these events that are, are out there in Illinois doing 1B vaccines already. Why are we still on 1A? The answer is look at where these locations are. They're in less populated areas of the state. The reason we're still in 1A and many counties are still in 1A in Illinois is because it takes time to get through all of those people and you want to get the majority of those people fully vaccinated before you, you know, enact your 1B campaign. So in Frankfurt, Illinois, and all those other places, they must have gone through their majority of their list of 1A, and that's why they have 1Bs. So just in case anyone's watching and, and thinking, hey, we're still behind the, the, the ball on this. We're not. It's just taking a little longer. We have more population. So, and the other day on Friday, when I first saw this page, there was only one event listed and now there are four. So that also gives you another indication. Things are trickling in as, as they can get to them. So we will be on this page soon. And we do have the ability, I'll just add uh, Chairman Sanchez, to have closed pods on this uh, where it's invitation only. So for example, if we are setting up a clinic for law enforcement, we can have them go in and register, but it will not be publicly available. Uh, or, or to, to Mr. Copy's um, point, if, if we set up a clinic uh, up at Sun City, we could make that where it's only for re residents of that facility uh, or that property. Um, so we can make it both public and make it a closed system if we're trying to be really specific. So it does have nice functionality and definitely want to thank Roger and his team who've been in, invaluable in helping us work through this. All right, um, are there any other questions or comments for this portion of our meeting? I'm not seeing any online. If there's any on the phone that can't access the chat, just go ahead and speak up. Okay, uh, thank you, Kathy and Michael for, for being here. Jared, uh, yeah. Jared I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I had to leave for a second. Did you make mention of my comment to you relative to getting this information to the people who um, have requested information? I, I was going to follow up after the meeting with Kathy and Mike, but the idea is, is to take the presentation that just happened that Mike just gave um, in the, the, the PowerPoint and to just take that and make that available to our mailing list, essentially, and to the public. Um, they can I, go I, and watch I, the YouTube video, but if we just take that, that section out of, of the presentation, the update, and then we can make that a separate link. Um, so we'll take care of that on the back end. But yeah, it's a good idea, Mr. Martin. So I, I think it'll be very helpful. Not everyone's going to see this and go to the YouTube later on and watch it and try and find where the, the update is. So I think it's a good idea. Yeah, well, that, that, that's 38,000 people that'll get all the information that we have in hand. And those are the people that probably yeah. really care more than anybody else. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Uh, Ms. Bates, you asked if this will be in Kane County Connects. You would have to speak with Mr. <laughs> Nagel. <laughs> he's not present right now. I can ask him. I'm sure he's going to be doing some story on this. Everyone is 
really looking for um, what's happening and what's going on. They want the update. So I assume it will be in Kane County Connects in some form. Oh, anything else? Okay, uh, let's move on. We do have a resolution authorizing the FY20 budget adjustment. Can I get a motion and a second to discuss and pass this? So move, Teppy. Mr. Teppy moves. You know, we could even have people raise hands. I can see you guys on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Who seconds? Somebody? Anybody? Mr. Weber, I see Mr. Weber's hand there. Yes, I will second. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, it's very simple, standard budget adjustment. Does anyone have any questions about this? Seeing none, clerk, could you please call the roll? Lewis? Lewis, yes. Chepro? Strathman? Strathman, yes. Deppie? Deppie, yes. Weber? Weber, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. I think I was muted. I vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Shepro. Okay, resolution passes. Uh, we have another one authorizing personnel replacement hiring for the Kane County Health Department environmental health supervisor. Can I get a motion and a second, please? So moved. Uh, who's that? Second. Second. Deputy second. moved. Who seconded? Teppy. Teppy, okay. Anyone have any questions or comments on this? I know Kathy is off the line already. Oh, no, she's there. Kathy, did you have anything that you wanted to add about this resolution? Um, no, this is, um, this is part of our headcount of our um, organization. So the person um, uh, is a, re this would be a replacement. Okay, any questions or comments? Seeing and hearing none, clerk, could you please call the roll? Lewis? Lewis, yes. Chepro? Yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Teppi? Teppi, yes. Weber? Weber, yes. Silva? Yes, Silva, yes. Resolution passes. Uh, on to old business. We have none, unless anyone of the committee has anything they need to bring up under old business. I don't see anyone. Reports placed on file. Can I get a motion in a second to replace the, to place the reports on file? Uh, Mr. Weber moves. Weber will move. Teppy Teppi seconds. Second. Teppi seconds. Any questions or comments? Hearing and seeing none. Clerk, please call the roll. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Chepro. Yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Teppi? Yes. Weber? Weber, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Okay, uh, moving on to, we don't have a need for executive session. There is nothing for new business unless there is something a committee member has that they did not inform me of. Seeing and hearing none. Public comments on non-agenda items. We don't have anybody online for, no. That means I need a motion and a second to adjourn. So move. Mr. Teppi moves. Strathman second. Strathman seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you.